So, hello everyone. Nice to see you all. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, as you know, that uh, earlier today, the General Assembly um, affirmed the Global Compact on Refugees, and we've just had an event to celebrate this. And now I'm pleased to present to you the High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for coming. I don't know if you were in the room, so you heard me speak about this, but let me just repeat a few of the things very briefly. First of all, um, I'm very happy that the compact has been agreed by the General Assembly, 181 votes in favor. It went to a vote because this was part of a UN resolution, the annual UNHCR resolution and uh, two votes again. So a very overwhelming majority of votes in support of this uh, compact. And as I said earlier, but let me repeat it, you know, I've worked for refugees for 34 years. Well, not all of them, but most of them. And this is the first time that I see an instrument being developed, a, a tool being developed to improve, to make smarter the way we respond to refugee crisis in this way at this level of political commitment to get it right. Because this compact is not just a UN document, a UN resolution that stays in a drawer. For two years, we have already in 15 countries rolled out the basic principles of this compact. Larger coalitions, uh, development actors investing different type of resources through different approaches, involvement of the private sector. We have extraordinary projects in Ethiopia, in Kakuma, Kenya, in Jordan, in many other places in the areas of energy, of connectivity, of communication, of technology. So there's really a new momentum that uh, the compact has created and in turn the compact offers a framework for this momentum to be better organized and better shared and more effective. This is really what the compact is about because all these things can be done without a compact but the compact gives them a house, give them, gives them a place to be better organized and to receive political support because this is what the General Assembly is, uh, uh, is about. Let me also repeat because talk I like to stress the concrete aspects. The, we believe that through this um, rollout, it's 15 countries so far, we've been able to mobilize six and a half billion US dollars, which otherwise would not have been accessible through the traditional humanitarian responses. Now, you may say it's still insufficient, probably yes, but. Uh, the fact is that it is huge progress. How many times do we lament that there's not enough money to respond to humanitarian crisis? Well, this is one way to do it. That this is not all that the compact is about, but it is an important aspect of it. The compact has many other elements. Uh, the compact is about sharing responsibility. On 85% of the refugees are in poor or middle income countries. We are also telling wealthier countries, take more of these refugees. This is a smaller program, resettlement, but it's an important one. And we are worried that in reality, in this area, it's not going that well. The figures are declining. The US has declined, it's, uh, has, has decreased its resettlement programs. So these are also areas besides resources that we need to be uh, working, uh, working on. And uh, surely, you know, my concluding point is one has to be realistic. This is a tough world. It's a tough world in which uh, refugees, migrants, which now also uh, have a compact uh, or will have a compact uh, adopted by the GA on Wednesday, I think. So this is a tough world in which these groups of people are often stigmatized, often singled out politicized, singled out as threats. And I think that one more message that the compact, both compacts want to put forward that these people not only deserve compassion and protection and solidarity, but when given the opportunities, they can make a formidable contribution to the societies hosting them. And the compact aims at providing states and communities with the tools to maximize, to create those opportunities. So, Forgive if I sound a little bit enthusiastic today, but it's a good day. It's a good day for somebody like me and my colleagues who've worked uh, on this for a long time and uh, who now see amidst so many worries and concern 
a way forward with light to aim for. Thank you. Um, High Commissioner, an overwhelming vote, and yet when you look at the two countries that voted against, one of them is arguably the most powerful country in the United Nations, the biggest donor to the United Nations, a P5 country, a country that has historically shown moral leadership. How disappointed are you in the United States? Well, um, you know that um, um, the United States already voted um, well, call for a vote, first of all, because normally this resolution is adopted by consensus, but call for a vote in the third committee. You know, you know this is the, the process. Now, it's very interesting because uh, in the third committee, the United States called for a vote, voted against, but if you read the statement that they made, it's very interesting. It says we, could, we'll, you know, we have some issues with the language of the resolution carrying the compact. They disagreed. They couldn't agree for a variety of reasons. But we support refugees and we support UNHCR. This year, we're about to close the year with the highest ever financial contribution of the United States to UNHCR. This is not to say that the dialogue with the administration is not complex. It has always been and it also with previous administration, continues to be over resettlement, over the border, but I think that there is a fundamental commitment of the U.S. Um, I would have hoped, of course, that they uh, uh, would support the compact also institutionally, but in substance, I think that that support will continue to be there. Hungary was unexpected because Hungary actually voted in favor of the resolution in the third committee, and today we learned that they would vote against. Uh, they expressed their reasons, with which I disagree, in the General Assembly today. Yes. Can you identify yes. yourself? To yes, the Stefano Vaccara, La Voce di New York, Radio Radicale in Rome. Um, Congratulations, yeah. it, Radio Radical. Yes. But I will have to speak English, yeah. Yes, but I, I, maybe the last part I will do also in Italian, if you can answer in Italian. But um, congratulations, it's a historic day, like you say, just a few minutes before. But you said what you could have done, and I'm not saying only you, but you say the United Nations, instead to have maybe in the language or in the document the United States in, if there was the possibility, if you think that there was the possibility, and then I say in English and then in Italian, Italy voted for this, for this document, but is not going to vote in two days for the migrant compact. So what is your reaction on this? Okay. Devo dirlo in italiano per la yeah, I, I, we can do that maybe offline okay. afterwards, it's better because other people don't speak Italian. Uh, the, uh, just to say that, uh, uh, you see, the language is not agreed by UNHCR. This is a intergovernmental, it's a, it's a process between governments. They decide on the language. We facilitated this discussion. And I can assure you that over the almost two years of discussion, on the language of the compact, we really try to find every possible accommodation for not just the United States, for every country. Every country had agendas, necessities, particular wishes. And I think that, of course, in the end, the, 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 this is a compromise between the, 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 the perspectives of many states. I think that the majority of states thought that we had reached the end of the possibility of compromising, and beyond that, it would have weakened the compact, and so that's the text that was agreed. And on your second point, you know, again, I, we as UNHCR were less involved in the global compact on migration, although very much involved, because there are many synergies. Migrants are not the same as refugees, but when they move together, they face many of the same challenges, trafficking. Uh, dangerous journeys, exploitation of children and women, uh, dangers at sea and so forth. So in those, all those areas that are, if you wish, in common, we have participated in formulating language that is consistent in the two compacts. That's why, you know, it's, uh, it's not my position to, uh, uh, to say what states to, should do, but ahead of Wednesday and the and the discussion on the Global Compact on Migration, I would encourage all states to support that compact as well, because the two compacts mutually reinforce each other. Thank you. Celia Mendoza from VOA Latin America. Um, I'm 
how this um, agreement will help uh, the plan that you launched in Geneva just days ago. You mean uh, on the Venezuelan response? On the response. Venezuelan response. Yeah. And, and, and also, um, when we're talking about all the resources that are um, bring to it, also personally, you have visited the region. Uh, can you share a little bit about your sentiment of what could happen? Yeah. Is a projection of That's, the That's uh, the Venezuelan outflow is, of course, uh, very large. It's probably the largest uh, population movement that uh, the region, you know very well, has witnessed in a long, for decades, if ever. And therefore, uh, we, uh, we received a strong appeal in the next, last year, from states in the region receiving Venezuelans. More than three million people have left the country in the past uh, couple of years. And uh, uh, the response that states in the regions are leading, and which our appeal of last week, IOM and UNHCR appeal, is meant to support, what they, the plan that they have put forward, in a way, mirrors the compact. It's cooperation between states, is finding a, a consistent protection instruments to give people uh, the possibility to stay and access education and health and jobs. Uh, it is uh, um, uh, also a very strong call to development organizations like the World Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank and others to come and support the inclusion of Venezuelans in services. So, so many things we call, we don't call the compact everywhere, but the compact approach is very much present uh, in the response that uh, we are supporting states in rolling out. One, one qu okay. quick question. Have... Joseph Klein, Canada Free Press. Um, I know you've compact and you've talked about burden sharing and uh, spreading the responsibility as a, as a global matter. But could you clarify uh, if a country along in the way from the uh, country of origin to the preferred country of destination itself offers asylum, people passing through that country, an example in Mexico to those from Central America who prefer to go to the United States. What, what is the obligation, as you understand it, of the, of the country that some of these asylum seekers would prefer to go, like the United States? Should they I, first have I the think, obligation? Uh, I think that um, uh, we have uh, an institutional mandate to help any country receiving people that may need protection or asylum. So what we are doing now at the request of Mexico to help Mexico strengthen its capacity to receive uh, more people is absolutely in line with our mandate, our principles and our work. And frankly, if this can prevent some people from having to embark on very dangerous journeys in which many, we don't even know how many, lose their lives, I think it is positive. But in no way strengthening asylum in one country should be at the expense of asylum in other countries, including in the United States. So this is a collective responsibility. For some people, it may be necessary to go to the United States, just as for some people uh, that crossed Turkey, it was necessary to continue to Europe. And I can give you many other examples. So one thing, strengthening transit countries, let's call it like this, and maybe allowing them to become countries of destination because people find it uh, good and safe and uh, uh, positive to stay there, this effort is cannot be at the expense of another effort. Both are important and necessary. We are asking everybody to keep their doors open. German TV. I was wondering if you could talk about how you'd compare the importance of the refugee compact with the Geneva Conventions. The Geneva Convention is a, 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 a convention, a treaty, subscribed by a number of states, not all. Uh, the compact is not. The compact is a non-binding instrument. It's a framework. It's a set of tools that are offered to states, to civil society, to the private sector, to international organizations to improve together their response to refugee flows. It's important to understand this distinction. The compact doesn't oblige anybody, but the compact offers opportunity that we hope states and others will take. But it is grounded, as far as principles go, in the Refugee Convention, and not only in the Refugee Convention, but in the many other international and regional instruments that codify refugee law. So there is a correlation in terms of what's the legal foundation, but the, there is no 
binding character, whilst the refugee convention for those who signed has a binding character. Any further okay. questions? No? Thank you very much. I can do. En français, vite. If we can do it afterwards, maybe. Okay, I will do Italian two minutes and French two minutes separately. Yeah, Thank why, you all. Thank you all.